Greetings from uh, ASCO in Chicago, 2018. I spoke at this meeting about the role of chemoimmunotherapy in CLL. Is there still a place for it? Um, I would say in the relapsed setting, if we're considering chemotherapy uh, versus small molecules, all of the data suggests that the, that question is, has a really obvious answer. So in other words, if you look at patients who were retreated with BR, or FCR, two very common regimens that we use up front, what you see is that the progression-free survival with retreatment is on the order of about uh, a year and a half. In contrast, the five-year follow-up data with ibrutinib was recently published in Blood, and that was the phase two trial where there were two cohorts, treatment naive, uh, small cohort, but then there were 101 relapsed refractory patients. And what that five-year follow-up data showed is that the median progression-free survival was 52 months, over four years. And what was particularly impressive about that is that the median number of prior regimens in that refractory group was four. So here we have a highly pretreated group where we're getting an average of four-year remission. So clearly that kind of blows chemotherapy away. And I would say that in the relapse setting, I, I really don't feel at all that there's any role for chemotherapy nowadays. Um, we also have venetoclax and rituximab, which in the Murano trial showed excellent PFS, nowhere near median reached at two years. And follow-up data at EHA is also going to show there's still not a median progression-free survival. So that's another great uh, treatment in the relapse setting, and that also um, blows chemotherapy away. So I, th I don't think there's any question in my mind that in the relapse setting there's no role for chemotherapy. Frontline setting is a little bit more complicated. And the reason I say that is there have been three publications in the past couple of years looking at long-term outcomes with FCR. And what all of them consistently show is that in the unmutated patients, there did not appear to be a plateau on the progression-free survival curve. But in contrast, in the patients who had a mutated IGHV gene, there appeared to be a long-term plateau, suggesting that those patients might even be cured. If we look at the MD Anderson data, and that one had the longest follow-up because FCR was developed there, at 12 to 16 years, that plateau in the mutated was at 60%, and many of those patients, when they were coming back to MD Anderson, were being assessed in peripheral blood for MRD and were MRD negative. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, I think there is a cure fraction with FCR but it's limited to the mutated, and particularly those that are MRD negative at the end of therapy, where that plateau is actually up around 80%. For patients who are unmutated, I would use ibrutinib. We have the randomized trial of ibrutinib versus chlorambucil that clearly showed ibrutinib, which is much better, but somebody could say to me, well, if I have a fit patient, I don't offer them chlorambucil, I offer them FCR, BR. So should I, how do I know that ibrutinib can beat that in the younger fit patients? That's a better control arm than just chlorambucil. There actually are several randomized trials that are looking at this. Two were done in the U.S. intergroup trials um, that have both completed accrual uh, well over a year ago, but we haven't seen the data yet. So one trial is FCR versus ibrutinib rituximab. And the other trial was BR versus, that was a three-arm trial, BR versus ibrutinib versus ibrutinib rituximab. So we will actually have data comparing more intensive or better chemotherapy to ibrutinib in a randomized fashion. We don't have it now. However, if we look across trials at the median progression-free survival, for example, for BR in the big German trial of BR versus FCR, it was about four years. What we've seen now with three-year follow-up on ibrutinib at last ASH is that the median progression-free survival is still close to 80%. So in my mind, that's telling me it's going to beat four years. So again, for the unmutated patients who have about a median progression-free survival of four years with FCR2, I'm going to use ibrutinib for now, barring financial exigencies, which are sometimes not small. But basically, I'm using ibrutinib in my unmutated fit patients. My fit mutated patients, those are kind of more complicated discussions in terms of the benefits of chemo, in terms of short-term therapy, uh, great long-term data, small but real risk for late a AML or MDS versus pills, continuous therapy indefinitely, 
et cetera. So those are, are, are long discussions. And I will say that the last patient I had that discussion with opted to take FCR, and when I asked him why, he said he liked the idea of being done in six months and in remission, not having active disease for a prolonged period of time. So I think that in my conclusion, I would say that as of right now, there's still a role for chemoimmunotherapy in the frontline patients, in mutated patients. By the way, I do think it's going to go away, though, because we have very exciting data from ASH last year and a presentation from ASCO this year looking at ibrutinib and venetoclax in combination producing very high MRD negativity. So I think there's a lot of enthusiasm that a doublet or a triplet, if you add in antibody, may, may create uh, a potential cure for action, way too early to say that, but high levels of MRD uh, D negativity also gives us the ability to have a finite therapy rather than indefinite therapy. So those combination trials are very exciting and I'm, I look forward to getting, hearing more data from those trials.